I'd like to call this meeting, this uh, special meeting to order at uh, 5.03 uh, Tuesday, May 24th, 2022. Um, adjustments to the agenda. Okay, seeing no adjustments, we'll go right into discussion. Uh, 3-1 EEI service update on HVAC and heating projects, Rochester and Stockbridge possible actions. Um, I can go ahead. Um, I was uh, in attendance at the meeting, a virtual meeting. Uh, Robert Mayer was as well, and uh, Ethan Bowen was. Um, unfortunately, Pat was uh, under the weather and unable to join. Um, but... Um, so, not everyone may know, but we've been um, actually kind of limping along with our current boiler at the Rochester Elementary School. Um, and I guess it had a leak and was repaired recently, but it needs more repairs to get us through another winter. Um, EEI, as we know, has been evaluating our buildings to, um, you know, to try to help bring us more efficient. Um, the Rochester boiler was or is in immediate need. So that is where uh, they, they focused uh, at first. So um, they did provide us with a solution uh, in the subcommittee meeting that we had um, that would change us from a steam boiler to a hydronic LP system, changing from oil to um, propane, uh, changing from steam to hydronic. Um, there are some other uh, options uh, with the LP part that we started to talk about a little bit, but they really have not been fully vetted for cost yet. We uh, brought up questions about uh, pellets and wood and um, or wood chips, I guess, and uh, electric. Uh, again, they weren't, haven't really been fully vetted for cost, but they are uh, a bunch more than, the cost more than the LP uh, system that was kind of presented to us. The time frame for EEI to switch our current system to the hydronic LP for the coming school year is pretty tight. You know, as we know, all the work would really need to be done by the end of August, uh, meaning we would have to approve this change by June 1st. Um, so the committee uh, discussed quite a bit and felt that the time frame to make that commitment to an LP hydronic boiler system um, you know, just didn't leave up a lot of time to really explore it and explore our funding options to try to figure all that out. Um, this does leave us with still the issue of the current boiler needing to get through another winter and, you know, mm -hmm. that it, we are going to need to repair it and it is that cost of repair. Um, but it would give us some time to be able to move forward on making a decision on a new system, you know, for the future, which we're going to need to do, but this would hopefully give us a little bit more time to, uh, you know, look at the costs, look at, look at funding options, um, et cetera. So uh, the cost to repair the current um, boiler, I think was, it's about 12,500. Is that, is that correct, Jamie or somebody? Yeah, yes, Lyle, do you want to jump in on the quote? Yeah, yeah. It, yes, but it looked like that would be best case scenario if they didn't find a crack in the section. If they had, a, if they do take it apart and, you know, using gaskets and all that doesn't resolve the leak uh, because they find a crack, then they're going to have to change out a, sec a section of the boiler, which is going to be an additional 2,000 something or other. So it'll, it'll be a little bit more than that, worst case. That's an ad alternate on the, the proposal, if I recall. Okay. Um, you know, the cost of a new, just changed over to a new LP system is um, quite a bit more than that. You were oh. talking, you know, in the $700,000 range. Um, so the committee would like to recommend to the board that we approve uh, repairing the existing boiler for this coming year uh, as we look to doing a change in the future in, in the near future but for subsequent years uh, 
Anybody have any questions or comments? Right, can I can I just add because I wasn't yes, part? Please. And do know, um, so we're still working really hard on additional grant funding as well. Um, and I have a meeting with Lyle just on Thursday um, to work on an RFP. We the states indicated that they may have some interest in us around um, doing a significant um, match around pellet heating in multiple bu buildings in the SU. So. I mean, the the recommendation of the fix gives us a solution while we continue to work on the EEI performance audit. We've got uh, Efficiency Vermont showing interest in working in, in your district. It, it, they're especially interested in Stockbridge. Um, and we have this, um, it's pellet heat, correct, Lyle, this RFP is for? It's for wood heat in general. I think it really depends on the size of your school and what makes the most sense for your particular application. And I, I think, you know, part of the, the process that we want to go through is between now and, and in the fall, when you, you would look to make a final decision around what to do moving forward for next year, would be articulating the plan for phase one, which is the immediate work with EI. Phase two, which would probably be about five years from now, and then phase three, 10 years from now, um, is, is sort of what I'm picturing we're going to be rolling out to all of our districts. And when I think about RSUD, that would mean both Rochester and Stockbridge, is that you, you, we are be articulating a three-phase plan for the board to consider, um, and then also suggesting how, how we would put money away and use um, the performance contract and um, you're building reserves to pay for this. Um, and then the board would have some decisions around bonding, going with a longer range plan, just how they would go about that. But we would give you multiple options. Right, and, and the immediate that um, is needed from the board is direction uh, to the administration to go ahead and re re do the repair um, at this time. So it sounds like we're ready for a motion. Um, I would move that the um, RSED board instruct the administration to go ahead with repair of the existing um, boiler in Rochester. Um, yeah, I think I think that's all we need for today because we know we're going to do the other work going ahead. Is there a second? Do I have a second? I'll second that. Thank you, Robert. Um, by the way, are these two numbers? These this is a quorum, correct? Um, these other uh, we have Pat too. Oh, we have Pat. Okay. Yes. Um, uh, good. I hope you're feeling better, Pat. Um, <clears throat> any questions? Yeah, any discussion? Sorry, Amy, you're doing a very good job running this meeting, so I don't need to say anything. <laughs> All right. Uh, any any further discussion? Okay. Um, there's been a motion and a second. So all in favor? Aye. 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 Aye for me. Then uh, all opposed? Okay. The ayes have it. <laughs> and still the four of us did, did vote. So that is yeah. still a quorum. So we're good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, then the next on the agenda is the um, high school environmental assessment. Um, unfortunately, I did not see this email till I just sat down in front of my computer um, and I tried to open it and I did not find any. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Robert. I think I thought you meant it for the, the June board meeting, not for this meeting here. So I, I did look at the edge. So I got confused about yeah. that. My apologies. I would have jumped on it sooner okay well um let's see um i was hoping that this document would be in front of everybody but <coughs> there's been some hiccup in that um vic could you help me out and, sure. and uh, give, give a quick summary of the the document i will make sure that it's converted to a pdf and distribute it right after this meeting yeah thank you thank you and, and thanks for allowing me to 
join the conversation today. I'm appearing as the co-chair of the High School Repurposing Committee. And I wanted to introduce a topic tonight for your consideration and uh, not for decision making tonight, but uh, just again, to introduce the topic and suggest some things for further reading and follow-up, which I'll get to in a minute. It has to do with the environmental assessment of the high school building. Um, there are reasons why uh, we believe that uh, environmental assessment should be done very soon, um, which I'll get to in a minute. Uh, we brought this to the uh, Rochester Select Board last night, and they agreed to go ahead and begin to pursue the process as a step towards uh, considering uh, the acquisition of the building. Um, as the potential purchaser of the building, um, the residents, the select board, they need to know, you know what, if any, contaminants, well, we know asbestos is an issue. We need to know what uh, contaminants are in the building, what is it gonna take to clean up, how do you get the money to clean that up, um, all that information, and that, um, we think that it will be important to have that issue settled uh, before going to uh, ask the residents for a vote so they can have an informed um, opinion about uh, what the what at least that aspect of the building is about. Um, also, part of the what would potentially make the high school uh, project work financially is to have tenants in the building willing to pay uh for leases to be in the building and in order to attract tenants they too need to know if the building is safe meets standards etc and whether all the environmental issues have been addressed before signing on dotted the line so that's important mm -hmm. um third issue is that um in vermont uh legal obligation liability for cleanup uh transfers with ownership um and and um i want to say <laughs> i should say at the outset I'm no expert at this. You know, this is learning on the fly, and uh -huh. learned a lot in the last week, particularly from uh, staff at Two Rivers. And uh, so, I'm I'm sharing recent knowledge, and uh, would encourage you to have your own contact with uh, Sarah Rate uh, at Two Rivers for for more background and understanding what your uh, liabilities, obligations, um, advantages are in in working through this. Um, so there's there's two types of environmental assessment. One is uh, pertains to the National Environmental Protection Act that has to do with federal funding programs. So as we go forward, we're going to want to uh, access implementation grants through community development block, block grants that will require a, a national a national environmental protection act uh, survey. This is a desk type of audit. It doesn't mean going to the building and drilling holes. It, uh, it's a review of documents primarily, and uh, that will take a couple of months to pursue. And we're going to want to do that uh, before ownership is, is decided. Um, the other process is a state level process um, that uh, considers uh, brownfield sites, which this would be. It's an existing facility that's being transferred to a different purpose and is likely to have contaminants in the building needs to be assessed um, there's a process for doing that um, the first step is that the potential owner at the town in this case uh, requests uh, the state to uh, uh, determine if the site is eligible for an assessment uh, and in order to do that it requires the approval of the current owner which would be the school board so there's documentation that the school board would have to approve and provide uh, to Two Rivers to then transmit it to the state. It's a one-page document. Um, you ought to have your lawyer look at it. Uh, you ought to consider it. Um, that's one of the things that Robert uh, attempted to send along to you uh, today. Um, so just in a, in a nutshell, what the process is, there's, the, there's two, three phases to it. The first phase is primarily a desk type of audit with a look at documentation for what might be in the building, what's been proven to be in the building and site, not just when it was a school, but going back to whatever the original purpose of the building was. And we know that there was a wood products factory somewhere on that site in the past, mm -hmm. back in the days of the railroad. Um, 
So, you know, that's sawmills and I'm sure there are petroleum products driving those saws. And so, you know, they're going to look back that far, at least. Um, the, um, so the first step is that uh, desk audit, they'll, they'll, they will examine whatever documentation is available, come to a conclusion about the probability of contaminants. That is the conclusion of phase one. That then goes transmitted to the state. Uh, the state, after three to four weeks, deems it's complete. And then at that point, uh, the, uh, the buyer enters into what's called the Brella process, which is the Brownfields uh, re Let's see, I got it here. <laughs> Brownfield re Reuse and Environmental Liability Limitation. Exactly. Thank you. Let's see. Am I? Is the audio coming through? Okay, I just got somebody just texted me. No. Okay, good. Uh, yes, what Robert said. <laughs> um, and uh, what that does is, if you go through the that process, which is a next step, then you uh, are relieved of of state level liability for uh, cleanup. The process will uh, provide uh, guidance and funding. Uh, for both the examination and for the uh, actual cleanup itself. So after this phase one is done, phase one is the um, desk audit. Then the next step is phase two, the first part of which is a consultant uh, would put together a work plan to figure out based on the documentation they've got, what might be there, how to sample the building, how many holes to drill, where, uh, what's in the ground, uh, what in the walls, you know, the air handling system, all of that. Um, and then the second part of that is the actual sampling process where a contractor would be brought in to do all that work. Uh, there is state funding available to pay for all that. Um, and the result of that would be uh, a clear picture of what the contamination risk of the whole property is. Uh, and then the third uh, phase is the... Uh, uh, plan for improvement where you get contractors to come in and figure out, okay, how much is it going to cost to take care of all these different problems? So that whole process um, is easily nine months, maybe longer. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, this is what we've just learned uh, this past week uh, from uh, uh, Two Rivers. Um, so that at the end of that process, uh, the, the buyer, whether it's us or anybody else, would be in a position to understand what's in the building, uh, how to take care of it, what it's going to cost to take care of it. And, uh, and the buyer can at that point back out and say, not for me, I don't want anything to do with it. Uh, and if that's the case, then the owner is then obligated to clean up uh, what's been discovered. So here's again where, you know, my, my advice to you as a school board is to really take a close look at your obligations and liabilities for this process uh, before you uh, decide uh, if you want to do it or not. But uh, what we were told also is that, uh, one, one second, one last point, um, the school as the owner already owns the liability for the process. So this process would not add new liability. That's what Sarah Ray told us today. So let me stop there. I've talked a lot, you might have questions. Go ahead, Ethan. Um, I have to remember what I was going to ask. Um, yes. Uh, regardless of the transfer, is this something that would that needs to be done anyway? Just as we own the building, whether we transfer it or not. Yeah. What What Sarah told today, it it it's not required. I mean. Um, you're under no legal obligation right now from the state because the state doesn't know what's there. Okay, <laughs> Once got the you. becomes aware of what's there, then there you know, becomes an obligation to clean it up in, within some reasonable time frame. So this presents the option of us doing nothing. Mm -hmm. I'm just, and I, this is me being devil's advocate. Yeah, no, no, I, I understand. Out. If we do nothing and do not present it as a sale to anybody, we are not liable and no advance in investigation happens. I just wanted to put that out there. Yeah, that's, that's my understanding. That, okay. That's the understanding. It sounds like we do, we do need to get our lawyer involved in this. Yeah. 
um, to find out what are legal. Uh, and I very much appreciate both your and Robert's and the committee's uh, work, the detailed uh, work on this, because obviously this was going to come up somewhere and uh, much, much better to have it be now than mm. then, uh, further down any road. Um, so, uh, yeah, very much. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. You're welcome. Go ahead, Robert. Um, yes, the um, I did ask the question, and um, uh, Sarah is going to to uh, research if we, you know, did demolition uh, that possibly might um, trigger a need for environmental assessment. Um, probably doing absolutely nothing, <laughs> um, but then you'd still have to to heat heat the place um, if. Uh, well, you could l let it just go, but um, the, and the I have asked that question in the past, and um, we need to check with the state to see if that's even an option, because they may require us to continue to to heat it. They may not allow us to uh, let it uh, let, let it uh, um, go to pot. So uh, I, I haven't gotten an answer on that. I I let that slide, but I'll try and follow that up. I remember hearing that before. Um, right, but I haven't heard that. I wasn't that we weren't we couldn't actually we might not be able to like the Department of Ed or something like that might have a say in whether we can actually let it. And and I just want to repeat to anybody who's listening or for the recording, this in no way um, indicates any preference on my part as far as what happens to the building. I just think mm -hmm. it's always very important to explore all the possibilities of what mm -hmm. each new part of this process brings. Yep. Um, so we have, uh, we need to get our lawyer involved to look over this document, correct? Um, is there anything else we're taking away from today, aside from this knowledge of this process and the length of, of, of the process? Now, just, uh, one other thing is just the, uh, uh, recommendation to speak that someone, uh, speak with, uh, Sarah Ray, um, uh, to you get have more detailed background on the process. Uh, you know, you're getting the second hand from me. I'm certainly no expert, and it, it's you know, always better to speak to the source. Could could the next committee meeting be a meeting with her? Yeah, sure. Uh, well, well, no, I guess that's right. It's a board meeting. It's not committee. Committee is to do with the energy efficiency of the entry yeah. school. I'm getting a little confused. What committee we're at? What meeting we're at? Yeah. Uh, Jamie. Just so I'm clear, I, I remember originally that this environmental study had to do with um, trying to seek out grant funding. Is, is that accurate? It, it isn't necessarily a requirement of selling the building for a dollar to the town? It's, um, I think as a practical matter, it's going to be required to get the confidence of the voters to accept the building. And, and my concern is that the building, it, I've already heard from several people, including one of the select board members, that they're very concerned that the building is is contaminated and you can't do anything with it. So, you know, let's not take the risk with it. I I think that there are other people in the community who feel the same way. I mean, the, we know from the Black River study that there's uh, asbestos. Uh, PCBs is all in the news. Uh, the oil tank has been discussed. And, you know, who knows what else from chemistry lab and whatever else, you know, might be in the building. But uh, so I, my opinion is that it'd be well to clear this issue up uh, in advance of trying to uh, mount a vote in the town. Ethan has his hand raised. Go ahead, Ethan. Well, I'm just savoring the silence we're um, <laughs> all dealing with right here. This is, this is big. Mm. Um, this is a, um, yeah, just big. And uh, uh, okay, so aside so from sitting down, some of us sitting down with Sarah Ray, and can you forward um, at least me and Jamie uh, contact information, email, yep. whatever? So yep. that we Happy to do set that. Up, set up a, a conference with her. Mm -hmm. um, and, and yeah, what are, where is I'm going to need whatever document you sent to the board to forward to our attorney because I don't have a copy of that. Yeah, I'll, I'll yeah, send you... that again. Oh, if, okay. if I, I change, I'll uh, 
convert it to a PDF and um, both documents to a PDF. And if you do me the favor, um, Jamie, of distribute it, distributing it once I sent it to you. Um, while I'm on, I want to point out that strictly speaking, it's only the first phase that needs to be done before federal grant uh, applying for federal grants. Great. But okay. the the as as a practical matter, I think we 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 need to um, if we're going to sell it to the town or to anybody else, we'll have to go through the process. And really, I'm sort of of the opinion that uh, we don't want to bury our head in the sand. You know, this is this is this is a liability that we mm -hmm. had all along. So no and more. Keep, keep in mind oh, we may ahead. have to go through a similar process when we're working with the um, you know some of the the uh, some of the work on the um, elementary school, like digging up the tank and that sort of stuff. If we're going to get, we may need to have some. I'm not sure yet, but we may need to have some environmental assessment. Well, and also remember that this does, although it sounds quite alarming, we did have kids in there three years ago. So we're not talking about that this is a yeah. really toxic. hazardous, toxic waste yeah. dump. <laughs> you know? That's right. So, to put it into perspective, but uh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Thank you, and I would look forward to um, reading the information uh, that will be provided, the PDF, um, on this. I mean, this goes without saying. It's just, wow, I wish somebody told us about this a year and a half ago when we were trying to put it out to real estate agents. I wish they just said something, because like, they must have known about it. Of somebody course. must have known about it. Yeah. And just, we could be so much farther ahead of the curve. Okay, yeah. pointless yeah. to say, but I had to say it. No, I understand. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is there any further questions or comments? Um, uh, yes, Robert, go ahead. Uh, yes. Why don't we put this on the um, agenda for next next meeting on the seventh? You know, and allow some time for it. Um, I, it it I may it may be that we have to have a special meeting for this at some point. Yeah, I I think it's reasonable, Jamie, that you and I could meet with this, Sarah right before that meeting and um, uh, possibly with our lawyer and um, um, have something to, we'll have something to bring to the board. Okay, great. Any further discussion on this discussion item? I, uh, I just wanted to mention that the, all the, the hazardous things that you're speaking about were part of a renovation that I just completed. So this is not, you know, it, it can, it's scary, yes, but it, it doesn't have to be that scary. It really, you need to do the testing before uh, you you uh, get too too worried. The asbestos, we know where it is. We've you know been you know had that under control for a while. We you know you can manage that and still have school in there even if you have asbestos. Mm -hmm. um, you know the PCBs are an unknown. The stuff we had was caulking and it leached into some blocks, so we had to cut some block out before we put the new windows in and frame them in that was not you know insurmountable uh the oil tank people take out oil tanks every day and do soil mitigation uh, efforts so um i'm, I'm not I, I wouldn't you know raise the, the alarms just yet until we actually yep. do testing yep. and the report may come back very much in our favor mm -hmm. you that never is an option Yep. Thank you, Lyle, for putting that into perspective sure. for us that you are, have sure. done this with other schools recently, and it's yep. not as scary yep. as it seems. Okay. Thank you. Sure. All right. Um, is there any public comment? Hmm. Pat, do you have any comment? I mean, uh, uh, Pat Harvey. <laughs> uh, no, I don't think I have any comment, uh, especially since the uh, RSUD is going to be conferring with their attorney. Um, I just, I'm just going to let that that dog lie right where it is for the moment, and uh, we will have discussions further down the road after you've made your decision about uh, which way you're going to go. 
if you're going to hold our hand through this process or continue to hold our hand through this process, I should say. Thank you for everything you've done so far, or if this is where we terminate the relationship. So um, that's, you know, I'm just going to sit sit still and, and wait until the time is right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, if there's no other public comment, uh, is there any other business? If not, I will... Entertain a motion to adjourn. So move. Seconded. All in favor. Aye. 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 Thank you, everyone. See you.